Hi, this is Alma Renaz, and I have Curtis Wall Street Carroll on the line. And today we're going to be talking about the airline industry. How are you doing, Wall Street? Uh, I'm all right. I'm all right. Nice to, uh, uh, good to, good to uh, be able to talk to you and, 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 and talk to everybody else. Yeah, so I wanted to start by asking you some questions about the airlines. The first question I wanted to ask you is how bad is the airline industry right now? Uh, well, the airline industry is pre- is pretty bad. Uh, uh, with customers, uh, many customers, uh, fears of getting sick while flying. Uh, the president uh, has put uh, travel restrictions on many of the commercial flights to the U.S. Uh, they got mass cancellations uh, that have built up for a lot of the U.S. carriers. Uh, and a lot of those mass cancellations have overtaken new bookings uh, and have forced the airlines to freeze hiring, ground hundreds of planes, and cut executives' pay. So, you know, right now they're just trying to find ways to to to, to make money. Now, there is a bright spot, uh, uh, you know, right now with low oil prices, uh, which have been good for airline, which has been good for the airline industry uh, historically and now, but... Low oil prices don't matter very much if you can't, you know, fill the planes with passengers. So um, right now they're 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 just scrambling, uh, uh, trying to come up with solutions and, and ideas, and, and and they don't have too much uh, that they can do right now as the uh, virus uh, continues to spread throughout the world. Do you think that uh, the airline companies are going to go bankrupt because of this? Um, no, I don't think any of the major carriers uh, like American Airlines, United Airlines, Delta Airlines, Southwest, or JetBlue uh, uh, will file for bankruptcy. Uh, unlike the financial crisis in 08, this crisis is not the airline's fault. Uh, you know, banks back then acted with, acted with a lot of reckless uh, behavior, um, justifying many of the bankruptcies that was filing, uh, that was being filed back then. In this case, um, you know, this is a virus that ain't no one's fault, you know, no particular industry, no particular person. Um, so the industry will receive uh, uh, some sort of aid. Uh, there has been, although, uh, uh, one bankrupt airli- uh, airline that uh, that was in Britain, I think it was in Britain, in London or somewhere over there. Um, but that airline was already having some struggles before the virus uh, started to take uh, effect. But that's been... That's been one of the only uh, bankruptcies uh, as of all this stuff has taken shape as of right now. And who will be giving the airlines money? Well, um, so the aid can come from a few different ways. Uh, the first the first step that the airlines are taking is they're drawing down a lot of the lines of credit that they've already had existing. So, you know, deals that they previously had with banks, uh, when times were good, just just the traditional lines of credit, they've been drawing down a lot of those credits right now, uh, trying to stay afloat. Um, uh, the second thing that they have is that they have to, that they have is to secure new loans. So a lot of the new loans that they'll try to secure from banks and other financial institutions uh, are to keep themselves going. Um, they can also sell new debt in the form of bonds and other financial institutions. Uh, I mean, other financial securities. Uh, where they can try to raise cash that way. Uh, but, you know, that money only goes so far, you know, when it comes to a, a, a long period of time of uh, of grounding planes. Um, like I say, a, a large portion of their fleets have been grounded. So, you know, with these, uh, uh, um, with the money they are given, you know, how far does that money go? So, so some lenders uh, will possibly be, will probably have a little bit of skepticism about giving additional cash given how long um, uh, they perceive this crisis to be. Mm. So is that how the airline industries are going to be receiving money through what you just mentioned right now? Um, So that's one way. Uh, Another way to also, too, they've been talking a lot about is, is government bailout. So Kind of similar to the government bailout that they did back in uh, that they did back in 08, uh, uh, the industry has asked the federal government for around 50 billion dollars uh, of aid 
in in March, uh, they passed legislation. Uh, they went through the Senate, giving the airlines $25 billion in loans, uh, guaranteed, and $25 billion in direct grants. Now, I don't know, they haven't really talked a lot about how exactly the money will go to the airlines, um, but, you know, uh, uh, I have some ideas. Is, is I believe that the Treasury Department could possibly take some sort of stakes in the airline. There were some talks about that, similar to what they did during the financial crisis. Um, the Treasury has a lot of leeway right now when it comes to when it, when it would come to giving the airlines money because they need cash fast. So you know um, what the Treasury can do is 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 is, is uh, give the, give the airlines uh, the funding that they need and take warrants uh, that convert into equity uh, that would allow the Treasury to buy stocks in the airlines at some later date. So basically, what they would do is they would give the airline this money and then. And then they would tell it, and then they would have a deal with their lines and say, once the stock prices hit to a certain amount, the the treasury can exercise those warrants, gain access to those shares, sell those shares, and then reap a profit for uh, for the American uh, for the American taxpayer. Um, I'd imagine that maybe some of the some of the things, some of the ways that they may be thinking about it, basically like, well, you know, if we're gonna bail if the taxpayers are gonna bail out the industry, then the taxpayers should reap some sort of award from it. So I can potentially see something like that happening, um, but there hasn't been anything really concrete uh, that I've seen to justify exactly which way they'll go with it. Mm. And so I guess like the most burning question for people who are interested in investing is what do you think um, we should do those of us who are interested in buying airline stocks, should we buy airline stocks right now? Um, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, I think people should buy airline stocks now. Uh, so, twofold, right? If you are a long-term... This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. If you are a long-term investor, which typically uh, a lot of people are, especially those people who have uh, 401ks and, 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 and different sort of retirement plans. Um, with the airlines being at these breakneck prices, uh, I believe it's just about, you know, in some cases, a certainty that the airline starts to rise back up, especially when they receive government aid. Uh, one thing about it is the government is not going to invest $50 billion into an industry they feel is going to fail. They're going to lose people money. That's not going to happen. So, you know, logically thinking if the government is willing to put $50 billion in the backs of the airline industry, then if they're willing to put $50 billion, then me putting up $20,000 is really, a, you know, a, 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 a no-brainer uh, in that sense. But, you know, just looking at the looking at the numbers, you know, back in uh, February, uh, late February, actually February 24th, American Airlines was trading at $25 a share. And by April uh, uh, 3rd, they were down to $9 a share. Wow. Back at the same time, Delta Airlines was at $54 a share on February 24th. And on March uh, 19th, they were down at $21 a share. You know, United Airlines on that same day was at $75 a share. And on March 18th, it was at $21 a share. You know, JetBlue on the same day was at $19 a share. And by uh, March uh, 23rd, they were down to $6 a share. So we're talking about company stock prices being cut in half roughly in the amount of weeks. So right. much of that is, you know, due to the Dow falling and, you know, the broader markets all tanking down with it. Uh, so a lot of that, some of these airline stocks have made a little bit of steam way under the Dow, has kind of reversed course and kind of started to pick back up a little steam. Uh, American Airlines closed uh, uh, Friday, uh, Thursday at $12.51 from their low of $9. Um, Delta Airlines closed uh, that same day at $25.32 from their low of $21. United Airlines um, uh, has closed at $31.50 from their low. So they 
you know, they pick back up a little steam. And Delta, you know, I mean, uh, JetBlue rolls up a little bit. So they pick back up a little bit of steam. But there's still some headwinds to come. I mean, um, the airlines are for sure going to announce negative earnings for the, second, the first quarter, second quarter, and possibly even the third quarter. Um, you know, even when they get the bailout money, they still have, you know, people still have to get their courage back up to get back on planes and start flying again. So all that stuff just doesn't just doesn't kick back in the gear once they get the money. So there's possibly still some headwinds uh, with the airlines being able with the airline stock prices probably fall further. But for a long term investor, um, getting you know American Airlines at 12 to 15 bucks is great. Getting Delta at you know 25 dollars and getting United at 30 something dollars. You know, Jet and Jet Blue at you know six to eight dollars will be some really uh, breakneck prices. Um, and I believe if people miss these opportunities to add to their positions and their portfolios long term, um, this would be money that they'll practically leave it on the table. You know, uh, I believe it's just a lot of surety that comes in when the government steps in, and if the government does step in and does take some sort of stakes in the airlines, that props them up even more. Uh, mm. I, mean, I, I believe that that's even more uh, surety. And the reason I say that is because um, uh, uh, Fannie Mae, uh, uh, the the, uh, uh, the mortgage uh, giant, uh, the government practically still has a stake in Fannie Mae, which is the only company they still have a stake in back from the bailout back then, even to this day right now. And you know, Fannie Mae stock price. Uh, you know, has fallen. You know, down. You know, below a dollar. You know, below a dollar uh, forty, dollar fifty, a share. And you know, their stock price is going to go back up to two or three dollars as well. So, I believe airline stocks are a great buy right now. Um, and uh, there's a good twenty-five to thirty percent upside uh, for people to add to their portfolios by purchasing these companies. So, I think there are some great buys right now. Wow, thank you so much for those insights, Wall Street. It was great talking to you. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, if anybody have any more questions about anything,